Let's talk about, uh, thank you, Lars, for grabbing the fines and just to keep everything on the up and up. This is the, I believe, the 31st running of the commongear.com podcast, possibly number 32. I think it's not sure. It might be 32. Might be. Might be 30, Don't quote me to 30. it. So uh, what we do here each week or as, well, as close to each week as we can is to look at several significant auction sales on the predominant digital auction sites, bring a trailer, cars and bids and others, and discuss whether or not they were good deals. And in most cases, we agree. Sometimes we disagree and it gets a little bit contentious, but uh, we all part as friends and we'd welcome your comments below as it relates to whether who you agree with and whether or not you think any of these cars are a good deal in today's rapidly changing marketplace um and as a quick plug commongear.com is the ultimate place to store and digitize your vehicle records when it comes time to sell that car uh we predict you will see a 10 to 20 percent increase in sale price over a comparable vehicle that does not have a robust digital paper trail records are the ultimate burden of proof when it comes to telling a potential buyer that your car is what you say it is so visit the commongear.com today and set up a free account to start storing and scanning your records of your vintage, historic, and or enthusiast vehicles. So with that being said, let's jump into it and share my screen. Uh, I just want to confirm, I see I see two vehicles. Um, <laughs> actually, no, I see three. I see three. Okay. Three, ve- share. three vehicles. One marine vehicle. <laughs> because the marine of our discussions vehicle. last week. Oh, good. I can oh, after I wanna, Jeff, I'm gonna have uh, a bone to pick with you and, about that. So. And just to throw it out there, that's an oddball for me too. I don't know a whole lot about that boat, yeah. but I thought that would be something fun. If we don't know much about it. It'll be really cool to discuss. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh let me uh let me go ahead and share the old screen here. All right. Well, I'm gonna save that one for last. That's gonna be. You want to do that last? Yeah. See that. That's a fun one. Yeah, because because I've got some new ambient. You know, Lars tried to try to talk some sense into me, and, and I bought it for like two days, and I talked to a friend who's a uh, who sold boats for ten years, and he basically shut everything Lars said out of the water. So I'm oh, looking cool. forward to preparing. We'll have to, um, we'll have to discuss <laughs> that on pick number three then. Yes. Yeah, right. Wait. What so about the, about the inboard and outboard? Oh, about your general, uh, how do I say this? Your your general um, advice as a way the kind of boat I should be aiming for. He, he didn't uh, like he, the Grady White either, huh? No, well, he, he took issue, he, we'll get into it, but he took issue with, uh, yeah, with, with why you disagreed with what my immediate reaction was in terms of the ideal boat for someone like me who tends to like a lot of pain and suffering. On mechanical front, so okay, anyway. well, we'll, 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 we'll stuff that. Go ahead. All right, so two thousand. Wow, this is a this is a deal. Two thousand seven E sixty three AMG sedan. Jesus, under thirteen thousand for one of these. Mm-hmm. So there has been a lot said lately about this the hobby car market softening, and I mean there is a lot of evidence that that is indeed happening. Like just you know. The, 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 some of the prices for cars that um, like this that were, you know, really regularly trading for over 20K are just, they're just cratering. Um, and there's been a lot written just as an aside, like some of the major car auctions recently, the, the Monterey uh, Car Week, among them, just that the, the prices were not strong, that the, yeah. you know, there were a lot of no sales and uh, particularly among what you might call modern, you know, um, not, not, like it was everything kind of in the middle, right? It wasn't the prehistoric or, or historic, you know, vintage class, you know, one of one of two cars that had been exquisitely restored. And it wasn't like the modern supercar. It was kind of everything in between was just, hmm. was just, was just squelched. So in any case, E63, 130,000 miles. So higher, higher miles. I feel like these right now, are at the point that I felt like the W210 E55 that I have was at a year ago where like prices are just like they're settling into the lowest they will be hmm. now. Yeah. You know, so I think as buying one of these now makes a lot of, it makes great sense because um, 
uh, you know, AMG, when they build a performance car, they tend to do a pretty solid job. These were um, substantially more powerful than the the W210 I have, uh, courtesy of uh, a supercharger that boosted horsepower to, as you see here, a very healthy 507. Um, now, as yeah, on a very this, general, this one, uh, this one's actually NA, I think. I thought these were supercharged. I thought the yeah, later so, one. So did I, but it says in the thing naturally aspirated but i uh i thought they were supercharged as well to be totally honest with you this is an e55 correct uh e63 yeah but i thought the uh i thought all the that part are... out you know what no that that's transparency at its best well, hold on because um in the in the description no, i mean I'll, say... I'll, I'll own the fact that i i i yeah. i thought no was it wasn't it was the, the e55 was i think you you are correct about that. I what was it? Was it was it? It was natural. It was an all. It was a natural because it was a different motor. I love it. That's a healthy number for net for a natural. Wow. Okay. So I'll eat crow on that. I I thought for sure. I thought there was some era of the John with the later one supercharged. Was there? I thought they, I thought there was an version of. The... I don't know. What that? Trying... Anyway, I mean, notwithstanding, I, I thought there was a turbocharging or supercharging that had happened with the E63 um, because I had historically always, you know, always preferred the W210 because it was naturally aspirated and just seemed like a less problematic uh, platform. So um, that being said, uh, yeah, I agree with you guys that that's an incredibly healthy number for a naturally aspirated um, V8. But re regardless, uh, so this is, you know, 130,000 miles. It's 130,000 mile car, which is probably what hurt the final sale price here the most, but mm. it appears to be in great shape. Mm. I, the only thing I would say is I, I think that these cars are still in that era of not, you know, they're not quite, um, they're not quite old enough yet to be considered like, oh, oh, geez, I got to run out and buy one tomorrow because there are no good ones left. And, um, you know, so I, I do think this is like peak depreciation right here. And at some point, like all classic AMG cars, the, the value will start to tick back up. But um, yeah, I, I don't have real any issue. I think this is a phenomenal price for one of these. And that in a few years, we're going to see. Now, now, since I knew they had some Achilles heel. So right here, head bolts. Yeah. So this, I, I knew that because I looked at the, um, the C-Class whatever the c-class variant of the amg was a few years ago and was scared away by the fact that they have it they, they need like they need the head bolts replaced basically so that's a fairly invasive job and if it's not done there can be a uh you know sort of a cat catastrophic engine failure so i i know that yeah i mean so, so this guy's saying yeah, if i were you i'd highly recommend you you do it right away um so i think that's really what um, was, you know, was really, you know, kept these from being as maybe as well loved as the W210 because the W210 really didn't have any real mechanical shortcomings. It was very robust and maybe it wasn't as powerful, but it also didn't have um, an Achilles heel like head bolt. So, you know, mileage and lack of a major pain in the ass job being done were probably the two things that kept this one um, very close to bargain territory. So assuming the guy got some money left in the tank for budgeting uh, maintenance purposes, it still looks like a uh, good buy to me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I threw the, I threw this one in there just because I think it's a really good uh, performance value proposition for the money. Um, and to the head bolts, let me just address that first. Cause it's the last thing you said, it's kind of like the, uh, the M threes and the M fives of this generation with all these higher tier, you know, performance oriented, high strung, you know, engines in these kind of like, you know, the German sedans, right? Sorry, I'm fumbling my words, but there's always going to be that kind of Achilles heel and something you're going to have to worry about. Right. But in most cases, from, from what I've seen and heard, it's uh, it's like, once you address them, you don't have a lot to worry about. It's the cases where people treat it like a normal car, not a high performance vehicle and you just change the oil and, you know, change, change the filters and you don't address those problems. That's where it really becomes a huge issue. But like the M3 and the M5 of the same generation, if you do the rod bearings um, and then the M3, the throttle actuators, people run them up until 200 K without too much issue. I think it's probably the same case here. If, you know, you put aside a few thousand dollars 
and you get the head bolts addressed and a couple other things, I don't see why this would be a, a totally problematic vehicle to own. Um, and again, for 12 grand, if you yeah. were to spend, let's even say two to three on the service and kept a couple grand leeway, just anticipating something may or may not happen, right? For under 20, you're well under 20K all in. It has nice wheels. It has nice Michelin tires. Paint looks good. Interior looks good. It's tinted. This is a, a nice car to drive around for 20 grand. And, and you're not a douche in this car. <laughs> to me, this is a very, Jeff, Jeff's like, no. Oh, no, I agree. I, I oh, agree. Okay. Oh, you agree? Okay, Sorry. good, good, good. Sorry. That you made it seem like yeah yeah you are but yeah, no this my, is a classy presentable and it's it's almost like a sexy I mean with the body yeah. it's like you know it has the AMG body kit yeah look at that I mean it's got I a, wanna, it's got I a twelve hundred dollar yeah. set of tires on there you know it's a, it's a fucking ten thousand dollar car as far as I'm concerned that is a slamming deal and if you look at an 07 M3 E92 M3 with even a hundred k miles you're not getting one for fucking twelve grand. Otherwise, I'd have two. But yeah. yeah, this thing, it's got the slush box, tranny. I mean, the tranny's not great, but you know what? As a cruiser, like today, what I did, drive 260 miles to the car show, this would have been a great vehicle to have, just sitting at 140 like it's nothing, getting seven to the gallon. So, Probably John, real quick, I'm going to jump in real quick Go before for John does it. Um, because I agree with with everything you that's a really important distinction here because you agree wait you agree with me i do because that's the first it doesn't happen often but um you know mine is obviously quite a few years older than this at, at the 2002 but it's the first like old car you know among the among the legion of old cars i have that i drive every day and i don't feel like i'm schlepping it like it still feels so classy and it's oh, it sounds yeah. it sounds burly like you can hear that uh, the v8 rumble even with the stock you know it's just the standard amg exhaust on it and uh it is like it's my new favorite car to drive because i finally am i'm kind of like man i've not had a daily driver that's an automatic since 1999 and Take i kind of I kind of like it because, um, especially like you said, when you're putting miles on, yeah, it's just you just punch it. It's it gets up and goes. It's the perfect car uh, for it. And these it are really auto bond machines, guys. Let's always let that. Uh, well, well and, John, and go ahead. But these are auto bond machines. We have. Yeah, to I mean, I'm that's yeah. this is a tough part of it, but being the the last one to go in a car because it's like I agree with a lot of what Jeff said, and I agree a lot with Lars said. I mean, looking at, it, I mean, it's. It's in, the car appears to be in great shape. You know, you're getting a pretty bomb proof vehicle. Hopefully, as long as the the bolts are addressed, the mileage is high. That's probably why this is a little on the more affordable side, I guess you would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, thinking about more and more, it's it's you, you brought up something, Jeff, is, you know, what what what's what's going to be a future classic 20 years time from the, from these mm-hmm. eras? You know, this kind of postmodern kind of 2000s on era because the head scratcher for me is like your car jeff your 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 car is kind of pure amg this is when it, the brand almost kind of gets a little diluted when you can get like the amg line stuff on any other mercedes where it's it's they almost kind of watered down the specialness of, of the amg brand so it's really to see what what this is gonna look like not not now but 10 years time but getting back to this car I think it's a. I mean, if you're, if you can get the the bolt the bolt thing addressed, this is a this is a stinking great deal. Yeah. 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 And it's and also well, amazing. The seller was not that involved in the listing, and he's. <laughs> everyone still loved the car. Usually, when the seller's not that involved, they. they, but they you know what? This also might have been a guy. I don't know if it says how many miles the owner this current owner put on it, but this might have been a guy in there. Who, who, who just he, he bought it with 118 and what's it have 130 uh, 130 so yeah maybe he's maybe he just bought this thing for 25 like you know six years ago drove it occasionally throws it up for no reserve doesn't really care you know some people yeah, feels like it yeah i mean that's what the, the evidence 
But yo, look at that thing. 12 grand. That's crazy. It just seems yeah. like that's a lot of vehicle and it looks oh man, it looks Yeah, cool. I mean, it's it is it's it's a hell of a lot of vehicle. I think it's I think as you guys discussed, it's the mileage and the bolts. That's that's the thing that maybe stops us from mm. fifteen or but sixteen someone, but, at least. But someone said in the comments, you spend a couple grand on it, you're good to go. And it's almost a good opportunity for someone because 85, 90% of people are gonna be like, Well, it's gonna blow. You know what I mean? Because they're worried about it. Yeah. But if you just run that, address it. Anyways, we beat this uh, car to a pulp. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I like. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. All right. This one is a. This was a curveball for me. I didn't even know this car. Just quite honestly, 2011, 335 IS. I uh, honestly didn't know the IS. Uh, Nameplate was still used as late as 2011, but this car has 5,000 miles on it, which is just insane. Um, and and what an interesting uh bag of, of tricks this thing has from Le Mans blue metallic paint, which is killer. It's got, I mean, this is much, must, I'm sure, Lars, you can expand on this. This, is, this seems like a legitimate, like, IS package and the classic. Yeah, can, I just throw, can I just throw in there real quick? Yeah. So the, the the biggest thing of the IS package, and I'll let you and let you go. Um, I'll go last on this one. Okay. But the IS package, biggest thing of this one, so it has the N54. Um, right. Obviously, you can get a 335i without the S with an N54, but it's the more tunable, like higher horsepower, higher strong of the N54, N55. The biggest thing is though, this one has the dual clutch from the M3. So yes, it's an automatic, but to have the N54 with a dual clutch gearbox from the M3 in a non-M car, before it was M40i and M Sport this, it was the IS. And this thing is a good a good candidate to wear the play. It makes it proud. It's a with the dual clutch, it's really cool. But go ahead. Go ahead. So you're saying this, this is a great candidate for a manual transmission swap because nobody would want that shitty awful complex transmission that costs so much to maintain that will never the same thing with the head bolts yeah but jeff Man, are you, you gonna, are you are you gonna really is someone we're seriously gonna do a swap on this car no, no it's just the whole Lars... reason it's special is because it has the D... Je... jeff jeff Lars jeff. loves this stupid transmission <laughs> yeah and if jeff ever drove a proper DCT... i think they're cool i mean i i would agree with you Lars. i think the i it's think not oh. let me just say this it's not an auto I, I don't Stop. have a hard on for manuals like the two of you do. So, like, I don't no, either. That's BS, I... Yeah, that's BS, Jeff, for you to just say, oh, it's a DCT. That's, dude, come on. Uh, I just see a really complex gearbox that likes to break. They're, and, they, uh, what, dude, they don't, they don't, they don't break. Yeah. Are anyway, they less, are they less reliable than a manual? Yes. But, yeah, I mean, it's like, so is a, 8,000 so, RPM M engine, you know? So, for the record, uh, I don't have, I, I mean, I really don't have a, I don't really care about, I, like, it's the whole manual, save the manual, blah, blah, blah. It's not really that important to me. It's like, I, I yeah. it's like most of those guys are, no, 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 most of those guys are defending shit boxes. And I, uh, you know, I don't really, you know, they see like an Oldsmobile Omega going to the salvage yard with a, with a four speed manual. And like, Oh no, save the manual. It's like, no, I don't really care about that. But, um, I just, I just know this car will be so much simpler to own over the long term if it had three pedals. That's all, all I'm saying. Like that, I, 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 just, I, I, just, I don't think, I don't think that's true, dude. Respectfully. Listen, I'm gonna excoriate you on what you think my boat choice should be. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I, Dude, I don't, I think this is what friends do, Jeff. I, I no. have to tell you my truth. This is what this, true. This is the whole point do. of this thing is to is to argue and debate. So I think because you're I not think, wrong, you're not wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I just don't. What is it? It's gonna blow up. The trans is gonna blow. I don't think so, man. It could. But you I guess the thinking downshift into first instead of third, and it's like, yeah, you fucked up. That no, I'm not. No, I'm, not I'm not gonna do that. I'm not yeah, gonna do yeah, that. that um, so anyway, I guess I could so I could almost get there more readily with you if 
with the M3 example, because then I'm like, okay, there's there's just a, you know, there's so much power right out of the gate. And, you know, it can it make you look like an F1 racer in terms of how you can whip the throttle and do all this, you know, I guess, cool stuff with the uh, with the dual clutch, whatever. But this car, I'm just like, well, now it's not even like it's not even that powerful relative to an M3. So now you've got, you know, an engine that maybe doesn't, I mean, it maybe feels, you know, it's a, it's a, I don't know. It's, it's well, not even. You got to tune You do would unfortunately have to tune it. Yeah. So like, so I mean, I'm just saying you have an engine that. You're right. If would, it was bone stock, you're right. You're, you're would right. all, would, will undoubtedly be more enjoyable to drive with a stick. So anyway, all that aside, let's look at it as being what it is, which is a E92 era car with 5,000 miles on it, which is insane. It's got all the sport package goodies that are late to sports seats and the larger wheels, so on and so forth. I I mean, I think this is... I, I see, see, here's my, my challenge. But like, I fully endorse the fact that it's cool, right? That it's, it's a low mileage specimen. It's a survivor. It's, it's a time warp car. You're not going to find another one of these um, anytime soon in the spec and so, and, and so on, right? Totally get that. I, I can even get behind the, the sale price. Look at the sticker. Again. Look at the sticker. You're getting a brand new car. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. Brand new car. 30 I grand. Just, but I guess what I would say is, and this is just where I'll, I'll sign off, is I would still, if you gave me the choice between 33.5 for one of these or 33.5 for a pretty darn nice um, E36 M3 sedan, uh, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the E36 every time. John, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I I, I enjoy watching the two BMW guys fight here. Yeah. That's, that's always really fun. <laughs> uh, there's 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 a lot to like about this car, but at the same time, there's a lot of just kind of head scratching. Like, okay, why why this car? Like, why whoever spec this? Someone someone spec this out specifically. It's like, why didn't you just an M3. You or, don't like it? I, I I like it. No, it's it's I like it. And then it's also like five thousand miles like only five thousand miles. Did you like did someone just yeah, want to bubble no, wrap this right. thing? Like wh- like why I feel you're like right. there's 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 if we were if we were talking twenty if we were talking twenty three five, hey this five thousand this five K this five K mile twenty eleven if went for twenty three, we I would be yeah great. This is cool, good for you. But it's got a very limited market. If you think about it, like for everything it has, it's I you know I I agree with you, Jeff. I would I'd get an E thirty six if this, at the same price. There's a lot of the cars I think out there. It's like a, it's, a it's, a, it's a car. It's a car with a limited market. This is a really it's it's appealing to six people and their dog with this car it's that's what it comes down to for me it's no, not a bad car right. it's just, I, don't, I, just move. Think it, I just think it's cool that they did they did the, like the trivia oh to the it, it and totally they put is effort into it because it's cool they didn't have to put that transmission in and jeff you are oh dude and, you, and the, you and the, no in the idea. e92 it's a pretty car e92s are pretty pretty cars it's just i don't for the price or anything it's just like a head scratcher for me Okay, valid. Go ahead, Lars. Let's... Lars, this no, is all you. I I can't. I really can't disagree. No, I I think I kind of said my piece. I think it's a wicked cool car. I think you're getting a mm. brand new car. Jeff thinks you it's are gonna be unreliable. You're getting a brand new performance sports car. You put a hundred k on this. You just you just buy this thing as a daily instead of getting a fifty seven thousand dollar three thirty i sedan with a four cell. That's I'll give I'm you that. Saying. That's I'll what I'm saying. That. Because you know what? Yeah. It's like, I don't give a shit about the damn, oh, blind spot detection and the radio. You go like this and it turns up. I don't give a fuck about, I couldn't care less. And it's crazy because I work in the automotive industry. I'm driving new cars all the time. I don't give a shit about any of that. So, right. so just, so he, just, he so just the hell of it is nice. I, That's so just, Apple car plays nice, but you don't need that crap. You don't need any of that crap. I buy this 30 K 5 K miles on it. Fucking thing's brand new. It's probably been in a temperature controlled garage. DC. T- <laughs> I mean, come on. It's the shit. 
So I just looked up the 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 guy, the person who bought it, and they have money. It's not like they're this is this is probably oh, yeah. not gonna be their daily car. This is something that guy. this is somewhere it was like, okay, you know, this seems neat. I can, I'll throw some money at it for peanuts. I, I mean, know. He, I mean, he bought a, a 22 Shelby GT 500 Heritage Edition for 136K. So, yeah, well, and this is it. Um, interesting comments. Um, three, three, I, really five, interesting. Uh, uh, go, what, Chuck? <laughs> I just I'm, I'm shocked by some of the Only comments. Only 4,000 of them. Well, no, I'm just shocked by the comments about like how it's a better car to buy than an M3. And um, it's like a budget that, I don't, M3. I don't know that I agree with that, though. Dude, if you put a tune and an exhaust on this thing, it's it's it just decimates an M3, unfortunately, in a straight line. And really? yeah, easy, easy, easy. Yes, yes. That's it's claimed it's three. Let's put it this way. From a practical standpoint, the M3 has 298 foot pounds of torque, and that's at like 6,000 RPM, right? This has 330 foot pounds of torque at 1,200 RPM. So, for all intents and purposes, this thing will feel so much faster and torquier than the M3 around town. Now, the M3's got the bigger suspension, bigger brakes. It's got, I don't think this has an LSD. So it's not an M3. It's not an M3. Yeah. M3's got an 8250 red line. Like, it's a race car with with all the performance stuff. It's stiffer, hmm. beefier, wider, fat-ass rear diff. So this so, isn't that, but it's a good daily. And, dude, I'm telling you, two, intake, tune, exhaust... 400 wheel horsepower with these th- with these things it's crazy yeah it's That's four grand maybe th- three or four grand and you're fucking smoking people from the stoplight this thing's I, a sleeper i just think so, it, i think the price is just it's the price thing too i mean i think if we're as i said earlier if we're talking 10 grand less we're 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 cheerleading this thing we're carrying it out if we're you know and grand less. Still looks like a jelly bean with headlights. Yeah, you know what? That's the thing is, I I feel like this is the type of car you get for thirty three grand, right? And if you put all your eggs in the basket, and this is what you bought, you bring it to the shows, and you go around, and then you start to realize, like, man, I could have got something way cooler, way more exciting. Yeah, no one's gonna notice it. No one's gonna sit there and say, oh wow, you got this E ninety two is. And, and that, and just you could get some like an M three. It's way more alive. It's way more yeah. like wow and it's still louder and, and i guess i guess that brings car. that brings it all back to my when i should have made for my earlier point which is that if i'm going to have the the maintenance requirements of anything complex right so let's just admit yeah, that yeah, yeah. This can thing. i finish my thought can i finish please <laughs> go ahead like like let's just admit a dsg is still more complex than an automatic let's also sure. be realistic that Turbocharged BMWs do not have a great reputation, whether it's an eight or a six. They are notorious for being absolute maintenance hogs when they hit over fifty thousand miles. So, I'm just saying that I I don't I don't get aroused by this car in any capacity or its ability to make four hundred horsepower or what have you because it's it's still once that that once the maintenance starts really becoming a thing. Uh, no one in 20 years is going to be like, oh, man, I, I, I got to find an E92 IS so I can restore it back to us. No, no one's going to be it's, it's going to be too expensive. It's going to have boatload of, um, you know, advanced driver detection system failures and airbags that don't work. And why, you know, drive by wire throttles that have, you know, gotten <laughs> eaten by lichens and moss because they put, you know, fucking, I don't know, cornflakes in there to. And it's some sort of green effort. I don't know. It's just going to be a pile of shit. And um, <laughs> that took um, a, for some reason, a very dark turn. So, I guess yeah, we'll, it's, it's, we'll it's going to be on. a very, very low floor in these cars. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just on it. I just, uh, I'm just keep ginning up for the boat discussion. So I just had to, I had to get ready. <laughs> well, here we go, folks. Here we, here go. we go. What do we got? Al is. <laughs> 
gentleman's racer. Okay, so I'm not ever going to own one of these. But in any case, uh, those guys look very, very comfortable in the back there, which is that that I would like to emulate that pose of just pure, author, you know, auth, I don't know, auto, mm-hmm. auth, authoritarian um, comfort. That looks pretty great. So this didn't sell. Been to 115k premium listing, so that someone paid that a lot of money to do this thing right. Um, it was acquired previously on that. What did it sell for then? This is interesting. I haven't thought about the boat market. So they sold it. They bought it for 111. It actually looks better in that picture. That's that's a pretty class. That's a ridiculous boat. Holy God. Um, so an Allison B12 mahogany frame. Absolutely. This is just like the, um, this is like the J- Jay Leno has, I think like a V16 powered Cadillac where you just kind of sit, you just kind of ride the engine to wherever it wants to go. It feels like the very same thing, just mm-hmm. on the water. So I don't know anything about this. Um, I've never seen one of these. I know very little about boats at this point. I know kind of what I like. So I don't know if we want to have the whole like battle Royale discussion about this, but I will say this thing is pretty killer. Um, from a style standpoint, Jesus Christ, look at that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that you you are whether you have the money or not, you are notching yourself up a few social classes instantly when you I mean, it's like honestly, if I had the gas in the tank just to like use this thing once and just pull into the swankiest yacht club I could find and just have people like spend the day saying, Who is that? Maybe I can like fool like 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 Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Tom Hanks and Big. I can convince somebody that I'm like I'm some serious wheeler dealer and like get roped into some financial deal that sets me up for life. Probably not, but like that's what I would attempt with one of these things. I just feel like that is the ultimate <laughs> in class. I mean, look at that. I mean, I don't care what. So anyway, Lars and I got in this conversation where Lars was very kindly trying to steer me in the right direction of boat decision instead of listening, Jeff, you know. Because he's gonna buy a shitter, guys. You're just you're just gonna buy you you want to buy just like the Honda Accord of boats, right? You just want to get something reliable. I'm trying to say I'm trying to put you in a direction where you aren't spending all these costs on on this old boat. Because dude boats are they are it's a little different than cars, man. They they can get pricey all that Mm. stuff. But uh so and I and I for like for like about eighteen hours I I thought Lars was right and that that's what I should do. But then I talked to a good friend of mine who was like, "Yeah, but here's the problem: you're if, if you want to buy something new, right? Let's just say your budget is twenty k. You're not yeah. going to get anywhere close to that. You're going to get like the most stripper grade center console. You're not going to have any any under you know whatever they call it, where you have the the space underneath with a little yeah, cabin." Wait, you're oh, you're, any... Jeff, you're so you're looking for a you're looking for a new one. No, no, no. So I, I'm saying after I talked to you, I thought about it. Like, oh, I should, you know, I looked at like the most affordable new boats, right? And there's stuff ranging from 16 to 25k, and yeah, all those that's, were... that's not much. <laughs> no, there's there's not much, and that's not, no. and I'm, that's all I'm looking to spend is basically in that in that range. So then, my buddy was just like, yeah, so you're going to be relegated to buying an expensive but stripper grade center console which again has no bathroom and has no cabin area so like you're not solving that problem and then if you buy a used one you're getting like something shitty where you're gonna have to yank all the upholstery out get all that redone because it's gonna be funky as hell down there where someone hasn't cleaned it out let water it will you know, be. it will so, be so he said so for what you're doing right now is you just want to you just want to like putter around kind of go like hug the coast a little bit, just go to a couple islands and your kids, they're so young, they're going to have the attention span of like 50 minutes before they're like, we're bored. You want to get off. And he's like, so get that classy ass wood boat with the 327 where you can just idle around from cove to cove. It sounds badass. It looks awesome. They're going to appreciate. And then in, you know, in five to 10 years when the kids are like, we can either spend time with you, Dad, or we can go off with our our dipshit friends. <laughs> then, then you go buy the real boat, where like there's space for them to hang out down below, or they can hang out up on the front, and you can actually get something for your money. But he's just like, right now, 
where you're at, where you've got that limited attention span, you're talking about 25, 30 minute pleasure cruises on a Friday afternoon, go out and buy a classy Woodhold Chris Craft that sounds badass, that's just going to go out and back a couple times a week. And he says, just like your, your money is not going to go where you want it to go buying the traditional, because like, it, it's just, like, no, if I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> After hearing you say all that, man, I, I can't say I disagree at all. And I think that he may kind of see what I'm saying, right? Because the, what I'm recommending, you know, the Grady White, yeah, okay, that's a that's a more serious boat, but you're not really looking for that. You're really just looking for something that that's cool, that sounds cool. You got the V8 under you, right? Maybe it's not the most practical engine. Maybe it's not the most, like, robust, but it's going to be a, a low hour. You're going to be using it very, very sparingly. You're not going right. to be using a lot of fuel. You're just going to be dicking around in it. And you know what? In that regard, yeah, I think. I actually couldn't agree with with everything you just said more and you said he sold boats for 10 years that guy you know he know he knows what direction to point someone in when it comes to that so well and he and he didn't got, necessarily just, there he didn't necessarily disagree with you he was just like with i've had plenty of guys come in right where he, he just used the example of like fishermen right where, where they come in like i just want to go out, i want to go out and fish i want to go out and fish and they don't whatever they don't have the budget or they're just trying to do it on you know on a budget and then they like they buy something that just like it just can't handle big open water and it's like now they're like coming back two years later saying oh shit you know this boat didn't really do it so he he just had a, a, a good way to get repeat like, customers yeah. oh a terrific terrific way but he, he was just saying like you know i've seen a lot of guys come in here who have like this this purpose in mind or what they think they want to do and then they spend all this money on a boat and it just it doesn't get anywhere close well, can you, to can what you, they want. Can you go back a few? Sorry to Yeah, no problem. Nothing. Hey, let's talk about and, this. And and John, what um because well there is a picture of the engine on a propeller. I, I think it's an airplane. Yeah. Which is really cool. But John, I feel like me and Jeff have been totally Yeah, I I, I, go, I wish you ahead. I wish you sent the sent this one early because I would have I would have reached out to all my boat contacts. Um and got some yeah, opinions who on it. No boats, whereas I know I know Dilly Squad of but like that motor alone. Yeah. It, so like, you know, I think one of the best, I mean, I've spent some time on boats, but one of the best things is someone just flooring it, you know, mid water. And that thing must sound like an absolute demon, that thing. Oh, with that 100%. huge V twelve. You you almost want to buy it just to oh. just to hear that motor out in the yep. water somewhere. That that's an airplane engine. That's so that's cool. bonkers, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I mean, oh. I'd love I'd love to see what what they wanted for it. Like, what was that? Yeah. What was that? What was that meat that needle price? That would have been like they. I'm sure they wanted to make their money back on it, but I mean, no, that's a really good point. That's a classy boat. I mean, I'm not too. Yeah. It probably wasn't even at cost, you know. Like it probably costs more than a hundred k to make. Yeah. Oh, easily. So there is some. Okay, so I don't know what this guy said, but they took his comment away. Uh, there's, a huge fight, somebody... there's a huge fight in these comments right now. Uh, both people are hardcore, man. <laughs> so I wonder. Did, yeah, what, Lars, did you did you go through the comments to figure out like what? what the conflict was about um no i think they were talking shit about the construction though but oh. i don't i don't really know i will say though this thing we were talking about limited market um it this thing is jeff that picture you when you were talking you put put a picture up of it was an aerial bird's eye view of this thing and yeah, oh, yeah. It's absolutely beautiful but let's be real guys this is for exactly like what you said you roll up to the yacht club and you're the man. Mm -hmm. It is a piece of yes. It is a piece of jewelry. You sit down. You yeah. can't move. You can't have your little picnic lunch on there. I mean, there's no space no. to do anything. <laughs> it's, a, it's a boat in a giant ass engine. So yeah. it really is a not. And I'm sure this isn't even something you'd want to take on a long trip either, just because it's no. Uh, I mean, e even no. look at this. Like, look at how uncomfortable this. Like this guy's got his grandson or whatever with him. I mean, look how. This like does not look fun, to be honest. 
If it was rough water, I feel like you'd be getting some, I don't know, you know, a well-designed hull can, can be very uh, protective of its passengers, you know, keep the water at bay, but I, I'm not sure. Well, um, I mean, just think a, about Go ahead. Well, well, just think about any car you see, right, that has, like, I think about anything that has, like, a, like a Hellcat swap, right? Anything other than a Hellcat that has that engine in it. It's, it's just going to be so overmatched like because honestly nothing else really was built to to take to take that on so by the same token like i mean as much as the power is going to be a rush and it's going to be a dopamine hit like you can't believe um there's going to be moments where you're just like man alive but there's so many other ways this thing limited because it wasn't it's a one man- trick pony it's a one trick pony yeah exactly That's right because so, you seriously. really can't do much with it you can take no. it around, but you, I mean, think about like, you know, say you own this boat, Jeff. The only thing you could do, or you, John, the only thing you could do yeah. is take the wife out on it and have a nice little glass of wine or some shit, cruise around. But you, you can't really do anything with this. But again, the person buying. You're taking your buddy and bombing around the harbor with it. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the person buying this, you know, that's that's not a concern. This is a, a statement. It's a piece of jewelry. Mm. It's it's a work of art. Having the engine right there, just being able to look at it, you know. I I think it's wicked cool. But John, yeah, I agree. I wonder how much they wanted for it. Yeah. Probably a quarter mil or something crazy, but I mean it's a craft. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying to understand that it, it seems like they're indicating a comment that they did a fair amount of work after they bought it previously on bat and the concerns were that they they hadn't provided enough evidence of the work done to um i saw one comment of not having any any a dyno graph to, to pull from to validate that it was making the power they they claimed it oh, was oh or- yeah that was it but you know what i don't think i think they were also saying they couldn't fully open it up because it's not broken in yet so it's yeah. like hard to, it's hard to verify the power because they have never cranked the throttle. I think it's like a fifty hour break in, and they've haven't done it yet. So I mean, this is one of those things, um, whether it's a car or a boat, right? That is always risky. Is when you build something that is very much in your own eyes, sort of the the ultimate build, right? It's it probably is pretty close to it, but it's, there's always that risk of it not being what someone else wants. And I mean, even this comment right here, this boat will take a special buyer, one that also has the space to store it and a lake to run it in. So that's, I mean, even just that, like, you know, if you don't have <laughs> open water that's sufficient to this kind of horsepower, it's kind of a non-starter for you. And, yeah. uh, you know, so, I mean, this is really, you know, the one trick pony thing goes a bit further because it's not only one trick pony, it's also a one trick pony with limitations. And, um, I, you know, I, I always, I, I find these types of projects so in- intriguing because someone obviously like, I, you know, I've been through projects where there's a point at which my enthusiasm starts to waver. And thankfully to, to date, my projects haven't been, so financially um obscene that like i i'm just like tapped out but like when i see guys who who spend i mean significant money not to just buy a turnkey car or vessel but to like buy it for six figures and then proceed to invest deep five figures like that's that's an impressive level of commitment because a lot of people at this level, like they, they don't want that. They just want turnkey. They just want to go yeah. out and use the thing they just bought. So it's really unusual when you see something that is requires someone of means to buy it, and then they continue to try to make it better. I mean, it's just that's that, that that's that's a it's a level of equipment I respect because you don't see it that often. But at the same time, I'm also not surprised to see you no know, you know reserve not met because it really would take someone who has the same level of enthusiasm for a project um, to, to make that work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty much, it's, pretty much it's, said, said what I need to say about this one. Um, but anyway, so let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, which, I, I, which one are, which one are we all taking home? Which one we feel is the best, the best buy uh, of the three? actually kind of a, t- a weird one, huh? 
probably the uh probably I'll, I'll go first probably the e55 i mean in terms of buy just because this thing this is an odd i mean it's so freaking cool but like you said jeff it's uh you know you'd have to have some serious enthusiasm for this thing you know um, right to really actually pull the trigger and own it not you know i know our our pick of the night is always theoretical it's not necessarily about the money but yeah um probably the e55 uh, i guess um if it was actually well to own one no the 335 is smd you guys know yeah what that means. <laughs> um like if you were just going to give me one but well if you were just going to give me one i guess i'd say the boat i don't know this is weird <laughs> you guys go i don't know I'm going. I'm going with the Benz. I'm going with that AMG Benz. I mean, that yeah. for the for the price and what you're getting in a car. I mean, you're gonna have so much fun driving that car. That is a, a, a an autobahn highway stormer. Yeah, it's probably the best deal actually for the money. It's probably the, the way to go. Yeah, I'm looking bang for the buck. Yeah, I'm with you on that, John. So <laughs> I'm gonna take bank bang for the buck out of it and and i'm gonna go with, with the boat here because it's uh yeah. you know yeah because it's um you know the, the so here's the thing like you talk about value right you talk about we talk about a lot on here you know what makes the most sense financially and um i often am the one saying like when i see a guy spending deep six figures on some sort of modern exotic Lars is usually the one saying yeah but he's got the money to buy it so who cares I um I guess what I love about this boat is that even with the price being not nothing short of obscene, I look at what else it's it's getting you, which is access. And so the fact that you could pull up at a yacht club and kind of instantly <laughs> have 60 friends who want to know what the hell the thing is is I mean, it's it's a unique value proposition that you don't get with the other vehicles on this list. So if we look at a value proposition, being not only you know the, the price paid relative to the value relative to the the vehicle in question, but also what happens after you acquire it. Like that's kind of why, even with the gearbox notwithstanding, I don't love the E ninety two because I'm just kind of like, yeah, but who cares? Like you're still not. There's nothing that comes out of that that um that acquisition that benefits you further beyond just having a moderately interesting daily driver with next to no miles on it so uh you know the e55 kind of slots or e63 kind of slots in between the two where it's you know it might stroke up a conversation but it's not it's going to take someone who knows what it is to really for that to happen whereas this thing i mean you're just you're a celebrity in 2.5 2.5 seconds once you get behind the wheel. So when I think about, you know, whatever they wanted for a reserve, maybe it's 150, 160 K that's still kind of cheap. When you think about the opportunities it affords to rub elbows with some pretty interesting folks. Agree. So, can't, can't argue with you on that yeah. one. It is a, it is a rock star factor for sure. associated with it. Well, gentlemen, this was a this was a, a always always a good time. Always go out to part as friends uh, at the end of the night. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Lars and John, thanks thanks for joining and for this really intriguing list of of finds this week. I mean, it's, it's you know yeah, these were oddballs. It's kind of hard to find a theme between the three of them, but um, but the, I, but I kind of love that because they're just so distinctive in their own right you know their their attributes are so just so um so unique right because this amg is just a bargain of, of the life of a lifetime right now for what you get in terms of exclusivity and performance the e92 like you got you know there's no denying this is just you're never going to find another one of these with this kind of mileage on it and this kind of specs so with that in mind it, it's definitely a, a you know a bit of a one-of-a-kind car and then the boat is just it, it's in a league of its own so um you know something for everybody on this list that they would say so with that being said this has been the commongear.com podcast thanks for tuning in we'll be back next week with another roundup of uh vehicles vessels and everything in between that demand discussion where we will debate their merits and 
uh, look for ways to benignly insult each other without hurting anyone's feelings. So <laughs> with that being said, thanks guys as always. And we will see you back here next week.